Hey everyone, and welcome back to Lorbeck Luxury Cars Friday Drive. I'm Sam, your host for today, and today I'm gonna to be driving this beautiful McLaren 650S. Let's start with the outside styling. Now, fairly iconic looking cars, right? McLarens, they all look the same and for good reason. They're such pretty vehicles. You can see the, the wheels here, you've got the carbon trimming in there. All the carbon trim all around the front here as well, which I'm a huge fan of, particularly with the yellow as well. And even the small detailing on the McLaren symbol you can see there is, is carbon as well. As you move around the side, I love these wing mirrors, not just because you can actually see out of them, which is always a benefit, but you can see the aerodynamic detailing they've put in for the airflow of the car. You can see the slats all through here just to allow the airflow to go through as much as possible. Now, obviously, being a McLaren, the doors are pretty iconic as well. I mean, there's not many cars that have doors like this, and as you look in towards the interior too, you can start to see that trimming of the yellow and the black and the carbon detailing is, is pretty amazing. Another one thing I love is that you can see the actual engine bay right here, this pane of glass that just allows you to see into exactly what's powering the vehicle. Also, the active wing as well here, we'll talk about that a little bit later, particularly for on-track performance. And actually at the back here, you can see where the mounting sits. It's almost like a race car at the back with the mounting. So it's one of those things that as this pulls up and down for the aerodynamics, assists you, maybe not so much on the roads, but particularly when you take one of these on track. We'll talk about the car for a moment. It's a 3.8 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine and produces, well, about 650 horsepower. It's actually 641. 650 is the PS of the car, that's why the number is the way it is, same as the 720. Now, in general, this car was actually built off of the MP12C, it began in 2014 to about 2017 was the, when they were built. And McLaren say that it was a 25% difference in vehicles. It's kind of based off the same model. You can see they look very, very similar. Now, a lot of these things are sort of hidden within the vehicle because the styling is very the same, but the wing mirrors are slightly different. The front splitter on this car, that's beautiful carbon uh, finish was actually taken off of the GT3 car idea and design in the race car and then implemented onto the vehicle. Same as the rear wing, slightly different changes with the active aero and, and a few other finer details that you know most of us probably wouldn't even notice. Now, with this car, McLarens in general are actually surprisingly comfortable to drive. You look at them, you sometimes feel like you're a bit stiff. Now we've got a lot of different drive modes here. We've got our track mode. This takes the, the traction control to, not all the way off, but nearly all the way off, but I'm gonna leave it in sport for the moment and I'm pretty comfortable. But also when I wanna deliver the power, you know, you've got 641 horsepower. It's an awful lot. And I've been lucky enough to drive some McLarens on circuit. And let me tell you that they're one of the better cars to drive on track. It's super fast in the straight line, but they actually have general really good grip as well. And the tires that they have on the Pirelli P0s are, are a great tire for that, not just for the road, but a higher aspect tires for, for the track also are, are superb. Another massive benefit in these McLarens is the PCC system, which is basically the performance controlled suspension system. So they actually took that out of the Formula One active suspension system they have in the McLaren Formula One cars at the time in 2014, obviously just prior to that. And active suspension has been around for a long time, but what I find really amazing about McLaren is they're taking stuff literally out of Formula One cars and putting them into their road cars. And there's not many companies that they say they do those things, but and you dive a little bit deeper, it's maybe not always the case. But with this, they're actually taking that system physically out. You can feel the, with the aero as well, you know, it's almost like a DRS system, that drag reduction. So with the aero, I can make it active, where as I go faster in a straight line, it will 
it will flatten, so it just flattened in. And as I take that off, it tilts upwards, which does create a bit more drag, but with the active system, it's basically like a DRS, which is pretty cool. Another real finer detail that I absolutely love is this button here. Now, it's just to go to the home page, but you might recognize what that looks like. If you were to see an above shot of the McLaren Technology Center MTC, well, that's exactly what it looks like. And it's one of those little fine touches that I think is really, really cool. A couple of other things, the, the paddles are really nice and responsive. I like how they have a little click to them every time you, you press them, because it generally feels like it's doing something. Sometimes you can click a, a paddle and it just feels placid. It doesn't feel like it's really doing anything. It doesn't give you that feedback. Whereas with this, you press the button, you hear the click, and it's very positive. The other thing is this carbon finish was is beautiful. I'm a huge fan. You can see it on the outside as well with the yellow trim. But then you've got this carbon steering wheel here, and even on the center where the McLaren logo is as well. That was a McLaren synonymous with Formula One also, and I actually got quite a cool story. And when my grandfather was racing uh, back in the 50s and 60s, he was racing against Bruce McLaren for you know quite a long time. And Bruce was never going to come to Europe. The whole idea was he just wanted to stay in Australia, he was doing his thing, wanted to build some cars, and kind of went, you know, I'm good. And Jack kind of tried to convince him that actually you're a capable enough driver, capable enough engineer, capable enough designer in what you're trying to achieve, that you can make it in Europe, you can actually do something. And it was kind of the, the convincing factor, if you will, to try and get Bruce over to the UK and over to Europe to go racing in Formula One. And, you know, if it wasn't for his, his tragic passing, you know, he, it's one of those things where it's great to see that name live on till now where you can sit and drive the road car and you can sit and watch the Formula One team or whatever it might be. And, you know, that history is there. And maybe if it wasn't for Jackie, he might not have ever come over and maybe we wouldn't be sitting in a car like this, which I think is kind of cool. A couple of those interior features, other than just this carbon, you can see the carbon up here to and all the panelling and all on the side. And I actually love how the um, aircon system is all to the side here rather than clogging up the centre, but the Alcantara finish is literally everywhere. You see some companies, they, they say, oh, we've got an Alcantara finish or the seats, or, and they kind of skimp on where they put it. It's all very random, whereas in this thing, it's literally everywhere, and even on the wheel, it's such a nice feel it's a great option to have on these cars because it just makes that driving experience a little bit a little bit nicer which I'm, I'm a big fan of now the actual drive of the vehicle well obviously this sort of car it's a top speed of over 330 kilometers an hour so i'm not going to be doing anywhere near that or probably wouldn't even be doing that on the on the track either but it's comfortable it's fun if i was to be driving around some really nice country lanes and such well that'd be amazing and the responsiveness on the wheel. A voice fan McLaren's very direct on the front end. Those front tires seem to be able to work really, really well, but it's not in a in a way where the rear is then limited. It's actually where the, that front just is really positive. And as soon as you turn the wheel, you feel like it moves straight away. There's no delay in what you're trying to achieve with it. And I think there's something to be said for that because sometimes you can feel them a bit labored, particularly on track. You know, a lot of these cars, they're, they're built with, you know, people learning how to drive in them on circuit. So typically they're built inbuilt with a bit of understeer, typically. Well, with these, I feel like there's a little bit there, but it's not as much. And actually you don't need to change setups and stuff like that. I've had plenty of cars where people have said, oh, I've, I've changed the setup as I've got faster because it's got too much understeer. Well, with this, it's certainly not the case. And I'm a huge fan of that. It just means that as I'm trying to drive the car properly, it allows me to do it. That's it for our Friday drive today. I've had so much fun in this car. It's been an absolute privilege to drive and even just seeing the door as it is now, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? It's the perfect mixture between road car comfortability and then what you can take on the track and enjoy so much. 
And that's what I love about it. It's just a mixture of, of both worlds. The small details that McLaren put into their cars is always fascinates me. So as always, like, subscribe, and follow more for our Friday drives here at Lawbreak Luxury Cars.